in Unit 11, Part 2, we are going to talk about function notation. Um, function notation has a lot to do with slope intercept form. That's just really a different way to write a uh, slope intercept form. So, for your definition, I don't really have a definition for you. I will just have an example. So, if you took the equation, the linear equation y equals x plus 2, which right there is in slope intercept form, to put it in function notation, we would just replace y with f of x, or f with x in its front. So f of x equals x plus x. Um, and then as I wrote on there for you, and I've been saying, we say f parentheses x, we read it f of x. So the first thing we're going to do is look at um, solving and plugging in to solve when we have something written in function notation. So it says let f of x equal negative 4x minus 6 and then find the indicated value. So the first one says to find f of x when x equals 3. So this is very similar to when we would uh, plug in values or solve equations given certain values like we've done in the past. So all we're going to do is take the original f of x equals negative 4x minus 6. And everywhere we see x, we're going to plug in 3. So to solve for f of 3, we're going to do negative 4 times 3 minus 6. So when I work that out, I get negative 12 minus 6, which is just negative 18. So for this function, when x equals 3, f of x equals negative 18. For number 2, it says f of negative 2, which is another way of doing what we just did. So for negative 4, I'll plug in negative 2 for x minus 6. So f of negative 2 equals 8 minus 6. So f of negative 2 equals 2. So that's solving uh, for a function when you're given the value of x. Now for 3 and 4, it's a little bit different because now we're going to solve for x. So it says find x when f of x equals negative 6. So we want to start by writing our original function, which was f of x equals negative 4x minus 6. And what this is saying is we're going to replace all of this with negative 6. So negative 6 is going to go on the left, and we'll have negative 4x minus 6. And we'll just solve for x now, like a two-step equation. So I would add 6 to both sides. I get 0 equals negative 4x. I'm going to rewrite that up here so I have more room. And I would divide by negative 4, and I'd get x equals 0. Because 0 divided by anything is just 0. Let's look at number 4. It says to find x when f of x equals negative 10. So I'm replacing f of x with negative 10. And then on the right side, I'd have negative 4x minus 6. Now I want to solve for x. So I'd add 6 to both sides. Negative 4 equals negative 4x. Divide both sides by negative 4. I would get x equals 1. So on 1 and 2, we're solving for f of x. On 3 and 4, we're solving for x. The next section, we're going to look at how to write a linear function. So in part 1, we looked at writing linear equations. This is the same sort of thing, except we're dealing with functions instead of uh, linear equations. So it says f of 0 equals negative 3 and f of 3 equals 3. The first thing you want to do is rewrite these as ordered pairs. So remember that the 0 here is our x, so they have 0, negative 3, and 3, 3 is our point. Okay. So this is now x1, y1, x2, y2. So we want to put this in function form. We need to find a slope, and we need to find a y-intercept. To find the slope, we're just going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that would be 3 minus negative 3 over 3 minus 0. So be careful on the top. 3 minus negative 3 is 3 plus positive 3, which is 6 over 3. So that will reduce to 2. So our slope is going to be 2. And then for our y-intercept, remember, our y-intercept is where the x value is 0. So if you look at this first point that we made, x is 0, for our y-intercept is negative 3. So we've got a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So if we're going to put that into slope-intercept form, we'd get 2x minus 3 
but we want this in function form. So instead of y, we're going to have f of x equals 2x minus e. And that would be our final answer. I'm going to let you guys try number two. If you need any help, just let me know. On the bottom of the first page are your review prompts. The review prompts are in the middle of this section of notes, so make sure you get those done. You can either do them now or wait till the end. On the top of the back side, we're looking at graphing a function now, which we're going to graph the exact same way we graph linear equations, which are the ones that are in slope intercept form. We're going to graph the same way we did in the last unit. So for number one, we have f of x equals x minus 4. The first thing you want to do is replace f of x with y, just so it's easier to follow. Then we need a slope, and we need a y-intercept. We know that the slope is the number in front of x, the coefficient, which in this case is an invisible 1. So my slope is 1, my y-intercept is then negative 4. So thinking back a unit, I've got a couple steps I need to follow to graph. So my first step is to put a point on my y-intercept, which in this case is negative 4. So from the origin, I'm going to go down 4 and put a point. Then from that point, I'm going to use my slope. Now my slope was 1, but we might want to write that 1 over 1 to remind ourselves that we need a rise and a run. So I'm going to go up 1 and 1 to the right and put a point, and I can just keep doing that if I want some extra points. The graph. Now at this point, I have not drawn a line yet, right? I just have the equivalent of a scatter plot. So to make this a linear function, I've got to make sure I draw a line through all these points, and I make sure that I have arrows on both ends, because lines go on forever. Looking at number two, the first thing I recommend you do is replace this g of x, which is just like x of x with a different letter, with y, just to put it into slope intercept form. My slope is what's in front of the x, so that's negative 3 over 2. And my y-intercept in this case is 3. So then we need to follow the steps that we've laid out. We start at our y-intercept, which is positive 3, so I'm going to go up 3 and put a point. From there, I need to do my slope, which is my rise over run. Since the top is negative 3, that means I'm going down 3. And I always go to the right, so I'm going to the right. So I put a point. I can do that again if I want to give myself an extra point, and then I need to draw a line through all of these. So I connect the dots, but since it's linear, it's going to go on beyond those, and I need arrows on both sides. The last thing in this section is using function notation in real life. So it says Maury and Sandra. I guess they have my talk show host. Maury and Sandra are sharing rides home from college. The trip is 280 miles. Thanks. 280 miles. We plan to drive at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. So part A says use function notation to write an equation given the distance traveled B in miles as a function of the time T in miles. So this is kind of confusing with all the language that they have. But if you think about it, at the heart of it, we're just doing 60 times X or 60 times a mile. But they want everything in terms of D and T. So I'm going to say that the distance that I go D is a function of the time, because I'm going 60 miles per hour. So that's going to be 60. So what I'm saying here is that how far I go, the D, is 60 times the number of hours that I'm going. Then for part B, it says, how long does it take Maury and Sandra to make the drive? We know that the trip is 280 miles. 280 is the distance, so that's going to replace the D of T. So I have 280 equaling 60 times however long it's going to take. So I can go ahead and divide both sides by 60, and I would get T equals 280 divided by 60, which does not work out clean. But if you work that out, you get four and two-thirds hours. Make sure you have the unit on there, because four and two-thirds doesn't mean anything. You don't have the unit. 